Welcome back guys. In this lesson, we're going to be configuring our CORS policy. Now CORS is an acronym for Cross Origin Resource Sharing. And this is just a mechanism that allows you to allow or restrict the sharing of resources across domains. So let me say that in a bit more English. When somebody who is not on your network tries to access your API, by default, your API is going to reject that access request, all right? So if I develop an internal API to be used in my company and somebody from outside my company with a completely different IP address and everything tries to consume the API or talk to the API, then it's going to automatically let it know that, hey, well, I can't send you any information because I don't know you. So we want to configure this policy to at least facilitate some conversation with sources or requesters that are not necessarily in our network, all right? So I've actually run into this before where I developed an API for my company for third-party use, and I spent some time debugging why this company couldn't access the API that was clearly working on my machine and every other machine around me. And then after digging, I realized it was the course policy. So sometimes you live and you learn, you learn through experience. Well, I'm here to just let you know what configurations you can put in place from the get go to kind of avoid certain busy work. So in order to add this policy, what we're going to do is in our startup.cs file, and I'm just going to add it here. Order does matter to some extent, but right now we're not really focusing on the order. We just want to get our configurations in. So I'm going to say services.addcores, and then I'll just put the semicolon there. So when we say add cores, we need to add the policy, like cores needs to know how to behave, right? So the same way that when we're setting up the agar, the swagger gen, sorry, we would say C and then this lambda arrow, and then we can have multiple lines with multiple configurations. You'd see it with endpoints and so on. We're going to be doing that here. So I'm going to say, O. you can use any token really. It doesn't, it could be C, it could be O, it could be the word options. Like I said, you see them using endpoints down here. So I'll just say O and then the Lambda arrow. And then what I'm going to do is open and close curly braces. So that means I'm going to have a whole block of configuration. So I'm just breaking the line so we can see clearly exactly what's what. And then I'm going to say O dot add policy, right? So I'm adding a policy, then I have to give it a name. So first parameter is the name, I'll just call it course policy, nothing too fancy or confusing. So course policy, and then comma, and then I have to define another lambda. So I'll just call this one builder because now I'm going to be building the policy. So builder, lambda arrow, and I'll just break line. So I'm going to say builder dot allow any. So here are all the options before I start setting them. These are all the options. You can allow any, you can disallow, you can set. So if it is whitelisted or with certain headers, you can define how your API will determine who is allowed to access me or my resources and who is not. For now, for educational purposes, because later on, maybe we can look at the securing of it and how we mix and match. But then once again, context is everything. If you're developing an API for internet and third party use, then you can't be too strict with the API if every and anybody should be able to get on. Otherwise, you're going to have an administrative overhead of trying to figure out who is who all the time. So I'm just going to say allow any origin. And I'm just going to chain along, allow any method, meaning they can access every method that every endpoint that is defined here. And then I'm going to say allow any header, sorry. Allow any header, all right? And then I'll close the brace for the policy and then use semicolon. So that's my course policy that I've defined. So I'm just allowing every 
and anybody once you're coming to access my api you can go ahead and use the resources once again context is everything that will determine how strict you are with your your course policy now after doing all of that i'm now going to go down to configure and i'm going to let the app know that it should use the course policy so right here i'm just going to say app dot use course there we go and then it's going to say okay it has some overloads i'm going to tell it the policy name see so just by putting the quotation marks it's now saying okay what's the policy name so the policy name as i just outlined up top is course policy so maybe you could make it a bit more informative you could say allow all right because that's all it's really doing this policy is allowing all so i'm going to say use the policy that says allow all right so that's what the course policy is really for so at this in this situation we're not going to fully see the benefit of it but then if you've done any other project where you have the api and then you have an entirely different project which is the client project which means it is being broadcast at a different IP address than our port, than the current API project. Once they try to talk, that will not work until you have this policy in place.